Hi there, it's the Common Magician. I want to try something interesting with you. Uh, if you were here, I would have you think of a card. You could think of any card, but you're not here right now, so we're going to do something a little different here just to kind of uh, make it fair. I have a random card generator app on my phone. The way it works is that if you tap this, you can see that it will uh, change the card to a random card. That's the idea. So if we just tap this a bunch of times, uh, you can see that eventually uh, we'll end up on a card. And I don't know if you can see that right there, but it ended on the uh, five of, of clubs. The five of clubs is the random card. Uh, and um, if you just think about this for a moment, about the possibilities, you have two different colors, red and black. You've got four different suits, right? Two red suits, two black suits. You've got 13 different options. You've got number cards, you've got picture cards, you have odd numbers, you have even numbers. When you take all of those variables and you put them together, you end up with 52 options. Uh, and that one chance in 52 that I could plan ahead for what you were going to think of, what you were going to pick. That's completely unreasonable and unthinkable. Yet, I happen to have in my pocket one playing card that I always carry with me. Just one card that I, and very fairly, if I reach into my pocket and I take this out, the one playing card that I carry with me, just one, very fairly two fingers, and you can see that it is indeed the five of clubs. Hi there, this is Carl Irwin, the Common Magician, and today we're discussing something um, I think that's extremely powerful and underused. Uh, and it's perfect for this channel because it's the kind of tactic that people shy away from because it seems quite difficult uh, and kind of overkill, complicated. Um, so they don't use it. But, but the truth of the matter is it is so foolproof and direct, uh, probably because it is overkill, uh, that really anyone with a, a small amount of practice can, can employ it. And it packs really big. It's just super powerful. Uh, and uh, it, it packs a really big punch uh, when, when used, I think, properly. Um, the example I gave you is probably not the best use for this, uh, uh, what we're going to talk about. Um, but it is the, the most direct example that I could... Uh, I think, present to you. We're going to talk about the concept of the index. Uh, so the index, or the pocket index, is an idea uh, whereby you can organize uh, any set of options that you have uh, in, that, that can be an outcome. So in, in the, the, it, with respect to a deck of cards, you have 52 possibilities, right, if someone thinks freely of a card. So the index is a way to get you to 52 outs so that you have all 52 options available and, and they really can just name or think or pick or, or whatever, select any one of the available options and you can present it in some way or get to it. This is powerful for mentalism because it really comes off as mind reading, right, or premonition. Uh, and it can be used for a variety of different uh, types of effects, not merely just dealing with cards. You can do this with uh, a prediction of a list of terms or names or celebrity names or dates or whatever. Um, as long as the options are given uh, and they are limited to that wide range, but limited, uh, you can have the ability to index all of those options and get to them in what seems like um, an impossible demonstration or highly improbable demonstration of chance. Okay, So the, pot the pocket index, uh, most people would be familiar with it from uh, Tony Corinda's 13 Steps to Mentalism. It's an old book. I think it was published first in the early 60s. Uh, it is still published. It's in reprints a couple different places. Um, it's not that expensive. You can actually borrow the book from many online uh, libraries. So if you go to archive.org, you can borrow the book. You know, you can read it through. You can borrow books on there for an hour and then, uh, get you know, 
borrow them for another hour. Or if you wait on a list, you can borrow them for, you know, 14 days or whatever. So you, you can certainly get access to the book if you don't want to buy it, but it's certainly worth the buy if, uh, if you have a, a few bucks hanging around. Um, it's pretty much all of the core elements that are required to do a good mentalism act. Uh, and many mentalists today are, are using the material that is found in that book, even today. Uh, the material is that good. It covers a wide variety of topics. One of them is uh, the pocket index. And it doesn't have a lot to say about it, but it does demonstrate uh, how one looks, uh, at least a couple of different variations. One in particular that it talks about was uh, created credits uh, by uh, to Pat. Page, Patrick Page, who was a magician at the round, around the time that that book came out. Uh, and it looks something like this. This is the uh, cardboard sort of description of what it is. It's, I make mine a little bit differently, but you can see what it is. It's a set of tabs. You have one cover, and then you have one, two, three, four tabs on the uh, uh, the left side as you're looking at it, uh, about a quarter of an inch high, and you can see that it's just about the size to fit a playing card inside of it. Uh, and then there is a middle section, and the middle section is actually in the back, and it's one, two, three, four tabs, uh, also quarter inch uh, difference going up. And then on the left side, in between these two sections, there's the front section here, the one on the left, and then the middle section is the one in the back. And again, it's just a complete tab because you don't need to have this small tab there. It's in the back. On the right side, as you're looking at it, you have one, two, three, four tabs in the middle uh, going up. And these create a file system in which you can set playing cards. Uh, and uh, it gives you the ability. And there's also, I should show, there's a back cover uh, which you can put another uh set of something in there uh, that you, you want to get to. You would put two cards in each one of these slots. So you would probably put all of the red cards in this and you'd have another one you put all the black cards in. So you might put uh, the ace of spades and the ace of clubs in the front and you would always organize it in the same way. So you'd have spades on one side, clubs on the other. And then you'd put the twos here and then the threes here and then the fours here. Then you go to the next column. You'd put the fives here, the sixes, sevens, eights. Then you go here, 9, 10, Jack, Queen, and then you put the Kings in the back. And you would cover um, half of the deck of cards in one. Now, this will expand, of course, uh, to fit all of those cards. It would expand out to uh, roughly half the size of the deck plus the card stock would give you about uh, uh, two-thirds the size of a deck of playing cards. Now, I prototyped this and practiced with it for a while just to test it out. The original has a little tab that sticks up on here, and I decided I didn't really need it. I felt that I could handle without it. And that is just so that you could uh, catch that tab and push it forward. I found I didn't need to, though, with the handling that I'm using. So I took a quarter inch off, and I just uh, cut it straight across there. But if you look on, I think it's page 90, at least in one of the earlier prints of uh, Corinda. 13 Steps to Mentalism, if you look on there, you'll see this diagram of this uh, index uh, attributed to Pat Page. Now, I uh, took the time to uh, prototype this, and then I made a template from my prototype. I made one to paste together to test, and then I made another set of these cardstock flaps that I would use as a template if it worked out to make a more robust version, and here's what I came up with. So I've got two indexes, and this is made out of vinyl. Uh, this is actually vinyl um, uh, flashing, like what you would put on a house, uh, just below the drip edge on, uh, or right in front of the gutters on the drip edge of a house, or anywhere you don't want water to get in. Uh, and it just comes in a big roll, about a foot and a half wide, and it's just a roll of maybe 50 feet of this stuff. And I recently redid my roof, and I had some of this lying around in my workshop, and I hadn't had any use for it. So I thought that would make really good material for an index. It would probably last me a lifetime if I made an index out of that. So what I did is I cut uh, my tabs from my uh, templates that I made uh, from my 
prototype. And then I also had uh, this uh, kind of material from a couple of old flexible binders, also very similar kind of material. And uh, I took some electrical tape and I just taped on the inside all of these flaps together. What that gave me is it gave me kind of an extra bit of thickness in between because one problem with the index is that it, you uh, have this expansion that happens and if it's too tight at the joint, uh, the cards will start to push up a little bit. So I cut these out, I taped them on the inside flap to flap with some electrical tape, and then I took a drill and I drilled down through about eight different holes all the way through, and then I sewed it together uh, using some thread, and I went over and over and over and over and over until it made a really, really solid connection, and then I put my cards inside. So the organization of the cards is as follows. Uh, as I described earlier, I have aces in the front, and I have all the black cards in the in the uh, black um, index, which is one of the reasons why I put two different colors on there, so I could just pick them up and know uh, what they would be. Uh, but I've got uh, the uh, aces in the front flap. I've got the uh, uh, twos in the second flap. This is starting on the left. Then behind the third flap, I've got the uh, threes. Behind the fourth flap, I've got the uh, fours. Then you go to the middle section, which is actually the back section. You can see it go all the way through there. Uh, behind the bottom flap, we continue on with the fives, and then the sixes, and then the sevens, and then the eights. And then we go to the next uh, column over here, and you can see I've got the uh, nines, and then the uh, tens, then the jack, then the queen, and then that actually takes me to the back cover where I've got the uh, uh, kings sitting in here. So spades in the front, clubs in the back. And then on the other index I do the same thing, except I have uh, the hearts in front of the diamonds. So hearts in front of diamonds, spades in front of clubs. Now each one of these, because I'm using a thicker material, which is actually better for the index. So when you make one of these, as uh, uh, Corinda states, you want to use a thick cardstock, something that's about as thick as a playing card itself. Um, if you go anything smaller than that, it can be difficult uh, to feel where the tabs are at. What I did here uh, is I came up with this design, and it gives you about the thickness of a deck of cards once you have it full. I've got one deck of cards in one pocket and one uh, packet the size of a deck of cards in the other pocket. Uh, which really isn't all that much as long as there's nothing else in the pockets. Now, another thing that I uh, decided to try out, it seems to be working out well, I have these plastic playing cards. This is, um, these are all plastic playing cards. And uh, they're very nice, they handle very well, but they are not good for magic. You can't crimp them. Um, you can't, you know, really control them like you do uh, regular playing cards because they kind of, you know, they stick to each other. They don't, they don't slide quite as nicely as other playing cards. Uh, but they are durable. They will last a long time. You can even wash them. I just never had a use for them. I didn't have any uh, real good purpose for these until I uh, thought about making these indexes. And once I made the index, I thought, ah, I think, I, I think I've got a use for those plastic cards. Now I can put them in here, and I know that they won't get funky over time. I know that these cards will stay nice and, and firm, and uh, they, won't, uh, they won't get sticky or icky or start to split or collect moisture. And it's just a good use, I think, for that type of playing card. If you don't like, you know, this kind of design, uh, which is an off-brand sort of uh, image to it, uh, I think Bicycle makes a, a type of bicycle back that is all 100% plastic, or one of the other uh, United States uh, playing card company uh, back designs, uh, I think they make in 100% plastic. So you can uh, get a deck of those and then use it for this sort of um, uh, presentation. Um, very quickly, uh, let's talk about some of the theory behind the index, though, uh, which I'm not sure they really get into much in Corinda. I think one of the things that uh, takes people away from the index as a means to magic is the feeling that it is too complicated or too obvious in some way. 
uh, that in order to use this, uh, many think, feel that they would be fishing around quite a bit to try to find that in their pocket. They don't want to be stuck in that sort of situation. But as you saw in the demonstration I did, at the moment of reveal, I merely just reached in and took the card out. So what's going on there? Well, the proper use of an index is not uh, to apply the index at the moment of reveal. An index properly used, I believe, is something that is applied ahead of the reveal, so that when the moment of the reveal comes, the uh, reveal is very uh, easy, very simple, and it looks effortless. Okay, so let me describe how this works. Um, if I just sort of stand up here, and I'll put I'll put the index in my pocket. Uh, the index is sitting in the pocket, and for me, because of the size of the index, it sits about where I can put my hand in my pocket, and my thumb is making contact with these tabs. Uh, and I can feel them or push back on them and get down into the tab and get uh, whatever I need. So I know that I'm doing 1 through 4 here, 5 through 8 here, 9 through queen here, and then the king's in the back. Uh, and all I need to do is once I know the identity, so this is the spade side, let's say it was the three of clubs. All I need to do is I need to get my hand in my pocket so my thumb is sitting here, and I would just roll it up and go ace, two, three, and then I can stick my thumb down in and I can pull up. And what I'm doing is I'm actually pulling up uh, one or both cards. I'm, I'm, I've got my thumb against the uh, club side right here. Uh, the spade is, is either with it or it's down in there. You can see they're kind of together. Uh, but what I've done is by pulling up a card, I've created a bigger index. So at the moment of reveal, when I put my fingers in, I just need to grab those two cards that are sticking out, and I need to just either push back on the club and pull up the spade, or I need to push... Uh, uh, up on the club and push down on the spade and then take out the one that I want. So if it was three of spades, I think is what I said, I can't remember. If it was three of spades, I would push down on the club, pull up on the spade, and then I would just pull this card out using just two fingers, uh, and then I would have that reveal. So you want to apply the index as a tool ahead of when you would need to reveal. Also, an index can be applied in such a way where you can get control of a card and you can palm it out or cop it out and then apply it as a stranger card or use it uh, in an impossible location or some other place as well. And I'll leave the mechanics of that to you. But a very similar kind of thing. You can just get one finger in there uh, to find your card of interest, get it out so that it's more easy to handle. And you don't have to do all of this all at one shot. You can uh, pull the card up or the pair up. And then you can move on and do more presentation. Notice that I gave all of that discussion in the example about probability. You have black cards, you have red cards, you've got four suits, you've got uh, a number cards, you've got picture cards, you've got this, you've got that. All of that is a misdirection. It is a time delay because as we were addressing what the selection was, I had already pulled up my card from the index uh, using my thumb. And then what I'm doing is I'm time delaying or misdirecting so that whenever I do go to pull the card out, remember, nobody knows at this point what I'm going to do. So the idea that I'm talking and my hands are far away from my pocket is alarming at the moment when I go to take the card out. Um, I'm using this time delay and this misdirection so that I have a very clean reveal. I've already done my dirty work, there's time in between, and then when I reveal, ah, my pocket is involved in this, in retrospect, the spectator feels that all I did was I freely and honestly took one card out of my pocket. So that is the appropriate use of an index, uh, and that's why you shouldn't shy away from it. You do need to practice with this. This is not something you can just make it and use it. You're going to need to take some time to practice with uh, acquiring your own special way of dealing with it and getting in there and getting control and getting access. We can take the idea of the index a little bit further. I would recommend that you look into uh, Daniel Madison has a product called The Advocate. It's been around for quite some time. Uh, if you look at Daniel Madison's YouTube channel, around a year ago he did a... Um, 
discussion on the advocate, which is, I think he made, you know, a decade ago, it's made quite some time. Uh, he, he talks about a presentation that he did at a convention with other magicians um, where he used this tool, this index. Uh, and he really talks in depth about how it's applied. He doesn't really give up the specifics of his index. You do need to buy that. Um, but he has a 52 card in one pocket index system that he uses that um, does not use anything else other than the deck of cards itself. So it's a manner of positioning the cards uh, in the pocket such that you can get control of them uh, in very similar ways that uh, I just described to you here, uh, all 52 in one pocket. It's pretty knacky. Uh, it is difficult. It does require some uh, practice, a considerable amount of practice, I think, to be very comfortable with it. And, of course, there's a little bit of risk uh, if you're not really, really practiced. But I would send you there if you want to go further. Another concept related to the index is something called uh, the body index. It's also talked about in Corinda. You'll find it related uh, to the pocket index. And that is the idea of just putting things in different pockets and places on the body. So you can have something in a shoe. You can have something in the other shoe. You can have something in a pocket here. This pocket on this side, back pocket, left back pocket, jacket pockets. You can have things all over the place and then just go to them as multiple outs. Um, if you take that down into a smaller uh, sort of uh, situation, you can use a wallet as a sort of uh, body index. So the wallet is an index. You place things in different places in the wallet to keep them separated. Um, now, people don't think about having a whole deck of cards inside of a wallet. It seems quite impossible and improbable. But really, you can fit nearly half a deck of cards inside of a wallet. Uh, it's not not that crazy to do it, especially if the wallet's empty and free of anything else, uh, except for maybe a little bit of dressing, maybe some credit cards or something, or a license in there. Uh, but there are a lot of places to put cards. This is something that I carry all the time. Uh, it is related to Kenton Nepper's uh, Colossal Killer, which is an effect I highly recommend. It is not his handling but it is quite related. It is just the body index applied to a wallet. Um, in Kenton Nepper's presentation, it's a 52 out uh, presentation where the spectator really can name any card. Uh, and there's a little bit of a wrinkle that he has in his presentation that can be applied. But just one wallet, they name any card, and then he takes out the card that they're thinking of or the one that they named. Uh, and again, like I said, he's not he's not carrying 52 cards in the wallet. There is a little bit of a wrinkle that is part of his presentation. My own version of that, though, is to carry just all of the picture cards, right? So you have 12 picture cards. That's not a lot. And then I start with the uh, picture card force. It's an equivocate force where I say, imagine a deck of cards. I don't have any cards on me right now, but imagine a deck of cards. Inside you've got number cards. You've got picture cards. Uh, imagine that you're going to remove from that box either the number cards or the picture cards. Which ones do you want to remove? If they say the number cards, you say, great, that leaves you with the picture cards. You've got the jacks, queens, and kings. So why don't you pick one of those? And what I've done is by them removing the the number cards, I have forced them into the picture cards. Conversely, if they chose to remove the picture cards, I can say, great, imagine you take out those picture cards and you're looking at them. From there, you've got jacks, queens, and kings. Uh, why don't you take out from there the jacks, the queens, or the kings? They can take one of those out and then we can go to the suits or whatever. So just using that one layer of equivocate, I can force down to the picture cards and I've got a trifold wallet. So what I do, I've got kind of two compartments. I've got my money compartment, but then I've also got my magic compartment where I keep uh, some gimmicked bills and some other things back here. And I keep my 12 um, picture cards. So I've got jacks, queens, and kings. I've got spades and hearts on one side, clubs and diamonds on the other. They're facing each other. I use a B um, uh, borderless back so it doesn't stand out. It doesn't stick out uh, should someone catch a glimpse. And what I do is I just open up the flap that I need. So if they say, uh, you know, the, the jack of spades, I can just push forward on the flap. I can reach in here, and then I can thumb off. On this side of my bills, I've got the jack and uh, I've got the spades and hearts. And on this side of the bill, I've got the 
clubs and diamonds. I just reach into the front side of the bills and then I uh, take out the one that I want and then I can reveal that I have that card in my wallet. So that's my handling of that uh, uh, body index applied to the wallet. That is 100% using that equivocate. Uh, something else I did, just uh, an idea I had was I didn't want the card sticking out, so what I did is I shortened the card length and height. Uh, I didn't want to use a bridge deck, I didn't want to use anything special, uh, but I realized that I could just trim like an eighth of an inch all the way around the card, and then I use a quarter round punch to just uh, bring in the corners. And now I've got a slightly more compact, it wouldn't be noticeable just by itself, but a slightly more compact set of cards that can sit inside of the uh, lip of the divider of my wallet. See, I've got this divider in the middle. And I can actually take the card out, show it, and I can reach in there and say, look, it's, I've got nothing else inside. I just grab that lip and push it down and, and, and just quickly show uh, that I'm free and clear. So it, it's, it's a good way that I have found to handle that uh, sort of uh, card in wallet, thought of card in wallet effect. It's an index. It's just the index principle. Uh, something that's very easy to do, very easy to apply and use. The index can be applied to other things as well. I have here, uh, this is a coin index that you can buy. Uh, it's just a, it's a, for a loose change. You would leave one in the car. Or this was a keychain actually at one point. Uh, but what I put in here, and I've carried this around and used it a few times, uh, I've just put in here, I think I've got 54 cents in total. So I've got a quarter... Uh, actually, I have a couple quarters in there. I have th three of them so that I can get all the way up to a dollar, but I typically just carry one quarter so I can do um, a, a card at number effect where I can uh, thumb out uh, the uh, right amount of change inside of my pocket. An idea I got uh, from Gregory Wilson's coin index, uh, so an idea that he talked about there. But you don't have to buy, you know, a special one. You can just get, a, you know, a cheap one. This was just a couple bucks on Amazon.com I got uh, a while back and played around with it. So you can index coins in there and then always produce the right amount of change or, uh, you know, some kind of uh, a trick that relies on an exact count of change. Uh, that might be thought of or useful for a reveal. So coin index, another uh, thing that I've played around with, I talk about in one of my uh, penguin downloads, uh, the magic bullet, the one where we look at the uh, underspread call. I've used a coin index that's just a, a card stock like this, but I put in 54 cents uh, just into little tabs. And then that sits flat, packs flat inside of a wallet. So I can do a very similar thing where I open up my wallet and I just put my finger in and push off the change I need and then dump it from the wallet. And it looks like you're really just taking out all the change you have inside your wallet. And it's exact to whatever uh, suits my needs in that moment. So uh, in index, the index is a common magician sort of method that I think people don't give a chance on, but it really can be applied by uh, someone just like you or like me, uh, who may not have a great deal of time to uh, perfect their, I don't know, their slights, their you know hard, difficult handlings out there that make some things work. This isn't really a hard, difficult handling if you work ahead, right? If you just work a, a, a few steps ahead on the index, get things presentable where you can get to them, and then hit them with the reveal. A uh, lot of different uses for it. So that's my idea, the index. Uh, good luck with that, and happy magicking.